Like all internet algorithm friendly videos, this video comes to you in three parts. How I got the job, what it was like to live in LA, and answers to questions from viewers like you. Hi, I'm Brian Albert. Usually I'm at the Savannah College of Art and Design, and right now I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area, but for the past 10 weeks, I've been in Hollywood. Hi, Brian Albert again. When I say Hollywood, I actually mean this 30 mile zone where all like filmmaking and TV show making is made. That's what TMV stands for, and I didn't know that before. Fun fact. Anyway, back to the video. Yeah, I got an internship in Hollywood, and it was really cool, but the process took two years. Which sounds like a long time, because, you know, it was, and it felt so much longer. I actually started applying in my sophomore year of college, and sophomores pretty much never get internships, unless they like explicitly say in the job description, so if you're a sophomore and you're kind of like looking into the whole like internship thing, I mean don't get your hopes up. I'm not gonna put you down or anything, but you know. Plus this word, or I guess words, mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. When it came to applying to jobs, knowing what I wanted was probably the most important part. Like I could have just applied to anything and everything that vaguely sort of lined up with filmmaking or animation, but I would have just gotten a bunch of rejection letters from recruiters who are like, dude, you don't qualify for this thing at all. Why do you, why are you doing this? Know what you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be the thing that's going to be your career for the rest of your life, but a hiring manager or recruiter needs to know what the heck to do with you. So be as specific as possible. I'm a storyboard artist and a screenwriter. So that narrowed down a lot of options and kind of helped me focus what I wanted to go into. But also there's not a whole lot of overlap in those positions. So I, I guess I had to choose one. So screenwriting. It's not like there's gonna be anything happening that could stand in the way of a screenwriting job. <laughs> Shit. But despite this, believe it or not, I actually got a scripted development internship at Fremantle US in Burbank. It was the only place I got into after two years of applying to 46 different companies, some of them more than once. <laughs> like, I didn't even apply for the scripted internship. I actually applied to something else. And then during my first interview, the interviewer was like, I think you would be more fitting in this other job. It took a lot of trial and error and a lot a lot of disappointment. I was applying to like three to four different jobs every month. And in those two years of applying to all of those different companies, I got three interviews and one acceptance. Wouldn't have been hilarious if I said no. <laughs> so yeah, this video was supposed to be a step-by-step -step process of how I got a job, but it's honestly not that simple. I wish it was, I so wish it was. But at the end of the day, it really boiled down to the strengths I had, the skills I wanted to acquire, and the kind of place I wanted to work for. Weirdly enough, job application requires a lot of self-knowledge. You know that dating advice that's like, work on yourself and the right person will come to you, you know? Like what people say when you're lonely. <laughs> Jobs are actually kind of the same. During my sophomore and junior years at SCAD, I worked on cultivating a set of skills that would make me a competitive candidate. Script coverage, being organized, giving good critique, and then a job description would open up that was like, we're looking for someone who can write script coverage, give good critique, and is generally organized. And I'd be like, oh, that's me, I do that thing. But it also can work Work the other way around. Sometimes you'll read a job description for something you like, like a Pixar story internship, and you go through all of the different requirements and skills that they're looking for and work on those. I did that a few times too. So yeah, long story short, I got a job at Fremantle, scripted development, awesome. Then I had to move to LA. So now the big question, should you go to LA if you want to work in entertainment? <sighs> I hate to say it, but yeah. Look, I know how expensive it is in LA. I live in San Francisco for Pete's sake. I know how expensive it is to live in California. Of course, you could totally like get roommates from like your internship pool, or you can get a long-term Airbnb if that's something you want to do. Because it makes no sense to rent out a place for three months during the summer. It's just kind of dumb. Unless you're a senior and you want to make that move anyway, my biggest advice is to save up. Six months of rent and food. You'll thank yourself later. Entertainment industry in LA is pretty volatile, but I gotta admit, it's a great place to be. If you're passionate about TV and movies, you're just surrounded by people who are just like you. Like I would go to a coffee shop and the customers were all artists and so were the baristas. And we all just sort of got along because we were all in the same boat. I once sat next to a guy at a Supercuts who was just telling his barber about his comedy self tape. Entertainment is pretty much all the place lives and breathes, which means it is prime networking space. Like you're gonna meet so many people. The Hollywood vibes are just great. Like it, it really is great, especially if you love movies and TV. Like going to watch a movie at an AMC in Burbank is the most fun you'll ever have watching a movie. Like the minute that Nicole Kidman shows up on that intro screen, we just go absolutely nuts. <laughs> Anyhow, because here they are.
Plus, it was Emmy nomination season when I was there, so billboards for For Your Consideration campaigns were on every street corner. It's amazing. And sure, maybe it's just the fact that I'm young and fresh-faced and, you know, entering into this industry as a newbie, but uh, there's just something real fun and magical about it. And that's knowing full well that Hollywood is f***ing <laughs> ugly. <laughs> But there's just something nice about sitting down at a coffee shop or a bakery and reading a book or writing a script, like the one for this video. And being in Hollywood and working in entertainment didn't really make me feel like I had made it, but I was doing the thing that I went to school for and have wanted to do since I was a little kid, so... I mean, that's a win, you know? And it didn't come easy. As I said, there was a lot of rejection <laughs> that came out of this, but that's what makes it all the more satisfying. The best is yet to come, and I guess so is the worst, if you want to look at it that way. I don't know. All right, on my Instagram, balbor underscore art, I asked y'all if you had any questions, and I got a few that I really liked, so I'm gonna answer some of those. What did you do to make yourself stand out? being myself. I know it's cliche, but I'm, I'm actually being serious. The entertainment industry loves distinct creative voices. If you can leverage your own passion for storytelling and art with your pragmatic sense of getting <laughs> done, folks will love you. As much as we artists hate to admit it, entertainment is still a business, so you gotta be able to be reliable and get it <laughs> done. People will rely on you to do your job and do it well. So if you can show that you love what you do and can do it reliably and on time, you're golden. But also there's a sense of willingness to learn. Like, you, if you're going into an internship, they don't expect you to know everything. A willingness to learn and to ask questions and to just shut up and absorb everything like a sponge. Oh man, people are gonna love that. Because there's nothing Hollywood loves more than talking about itself. <laughs> what skills helped you the most in the internship? Organization and communication. Whenever I was given an assignment, whether that be coverage to write or a book to read, it was imperative that I asked questions if I needed help and that my deliverables were according to their specification. Basically, if you can make your boss's life easier, they're gonna really like you. And if they like you, they want you around. Basically, just know your job and do it really well. Lunch? One o'clock every day, industry standard. I'm pretty sure even the strikes went on lunch at one o'clock. How did they help you grow as an artist? My boss was really cool and got us different like informational interviews between like important people in the industry and myself and my other fellow intern, Anna Kay, shout out. And I asked a lot of questions about what they look for in storytelling and what kind of people really succeed in the industry. One of the best pieces of advice I got was from Salome Williams, who is an amazing, amazing, amazing film and TV producer. And the advice that she told us was honing our taste. Know what you like and don't like and why. Be able to articulate the reasoning behind why you like or don't like what you like or don't like. And while I was in LA, I, I was watching a ton of movies and TV shows because it's just part of the environment, but also because it's part of the job. I even read a ton of books because again, part of the job. But having those discussions with my coworkers and my fellow interns about why something worked or something didn't work helped me understand how to tell good stories and what a good story even is. Because scripted development, if you're not aware, is about finding the stories that people want to watch and hopefully pay money to watch. So it was really important for me as an intern in this department to understand what makes a good story. So I'm gonna extend that advice to you. Being able to articulate why you like or don't like something while still acknowledging how it could be appealing to certain audiences is super important. It doesn't even matter what field you are, whether you're doing a more business-ended side of things as a producer or you're an animator or a screenwriter or a director. Watch anything and everything that you can, not just what you're used to. For all you live action filmmakers, know your favorite writers and directors. For all you animators, know your favorite animated films and animators. And not just the ones that are popular now, but all the way back then too. Know your craft like it's your job because it will be. How did reality measure up to your expectations? Honestly, I didn't really have expectations. I came in hoping to be a sponge, just soaking in all the information that I could. Going in without expectations might be the best thing for you to do. It leaves you open to anything and everything. I discovered I loved live multicam television because I was on set for Let's Make a Deal. And that was like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna like, so just go in with an open mind. Any general advice? A few pieces of advice, actually. I already started with a list, so I guess we're gonna have to make a sub-list. Like, this is a sub-list within the bigger list. We'll make it like a different color or, or something. Don't just apply for major studios. You're probably not gonna get them. I'm just being honest. I'm sorry. I mean, you might. Like, I'm not gonna doubt you. You're probably an awesome person. But I wouldn't 
bank on it. I applied to anywhere that could accept my resume. I just wanted a job and I wanted to dip my toes in the water somehow. Organize your job search. You don't want to forget where you applied and then accidentally apply twice. It just looks bad. And I know because I did that and it was bad. So I made a spreadsheet to track the status of all of my applications and it worked like a charm. Interviews are two way streets. It's cliche, but like, it's true. You're interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing you. And at the end of the interview, when they ask you, do you have any questions? This is your opportunity to really get to know this company. Ask relevant questions. It shows you've done your research and you actually care. Don't just say, nah, I'm good, because that looks bad. And again, I know that because I said exactly that verbatim at one of my interviews. <laughs> Man, I am an idiot. <laughs> your portfolio is never finished. Whether you're an animator, screenwriter, director, whatever, you always gotta be working on stuff. Always be creating and improving. When I applied to the storyboarding internships, I was so concerned with finishing my storyboarding portfolio that it just came out rushed and half-baked and just not very good. Make a ton of stuff and throw out the stuff you don't like. Most of it's probably gonna be crap, but that's okay, it's part of it. Enjoy it, love it, and do it well. Shifting goals doesn't mean giving up. When I first entered SCAD, I wanted to be a 3D animator, and then I became a storyboard artist, and then a screenwriter. I applied for storyboarding jobs, didn't get any of them, and now I'm in scripted development. I didn't even know what that was four years ago. There's nothing wrong with shifting around and discovering what you like and who you are. I went down the storyboarding path for a while, didn't turn out. Went down the screenwriting path, I got a job. Just how it works. Reach out and talk to people. This one's hard because the people talky thing is scary and I'm not good at it. But believe me, it's only scary for like the first five minutes. When I was in LA, I had awesome conversations with the coolest people. Whether that be people in the scripted department at Fremantle or people who were friends of friends of friends that I just happened to come across because we were both in entertainment. I learned so much about the industry and the business in ways that I could never have learned in school. All because I would send an email asking for 15 minutes of their time. And sometimes those 15 minutes would become 30 minutes, hours. All of the people that you're gonna meet in this industry are in it because they're just as excited to be there as you are. And the people who aren't are probably not worth talking to. The people who are excited and passionate and want to help you are always worth your time. And there's a lot more of them than you think. And also be honest about what you want. If you wanna be a screenwriter, tell people. If you wanna be a DP, tell people. If you wanna be an animator, tell people. Be specific about what you want because they won't know how to talk to you if they don't know what you want to do. I made that mistake and the guy I was talking to was like, I don't know how to talk to you. Like he was just straight up. He was just all like, I don't know what to tell you, man. You're not giving me anything specific. I have no advice for you. So then I tried again and I said, I want to be a screenwriter for animation and he said there you go now I know what to tell you a little bit of vulnerability is actually encouraged in this industry because at the end of the day we're all storytellers and stories are inherently vulnerable and that's kind of the beauty of the entertainment industry it's this weird intersection between business professionalism and crazy artistic emotionality don't let someone else tell you what you're worth this last piece of advice is a short story so bear with me this is important I got an interview at a studio and for the sake of professionalism I will not name the studio and please Please do not ask, I will not tell you. There's a small studio in my area that focused on business to business animation explainers for like Fortune 500 companies. It was a Zoom interview. The guy I was talking to was actually the CEO of the company. That's how small this company was. And during the interview, while I was talking, he would go on his phone, get up to get coffee, carry his laptop around the house, basically not pay attention to me. It was a writing job, so he asked me how much I was willing to write in a week, and so I told him, and then he threw his head back and laughed. At the end of the interview, he told me, and I, 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 I'm gonna remember this, not out of spite, but as a reminder, he said, the purpose of this interview is to show me that you have value and you have failed. And even after saying that, he offered me a position and I'd have to be a really self-hating idiot to say yes. But I actually almost did. I almost said yes out of pure desperation for a job. But if I did, I would have been condemned to a job where nobody respected me. No one has the right to tell you you're not worth their time. I said no to the job. I emailed him, thanking him for his time and his honesty. He never responded. I don't actually think he intended on hiring me. 
I think he was just throwing me a bone. But I'm glad. I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of glad because I don't think I would have enjoyed that job. Two weeks later, I got an interview at Fremantle. And it was awesome. Fremantle was the exact opposite of that guy. Everyone was kind and willing to help. They would answer any and all of my questions. They were excited to have me around and they valued my opinion. The reality of entertainment is that there will probably be a lot of interviews like that one. Really crappy interviews. But it is your job as an artist, a creative, and a professional to keep trying anyway because you're worth that. My story's still unraveling. I'm technically unemployed now, so there's that. But the last 10 weeks were great and so helpful and so inspiring and so much fun. I know my story won't be the same as yours because no two stories are going to be the same, of course. Yours will differ greatly from mine, for better or for worse. That's because your creative journey is unrepeatable, so make it a good one. If you have any more questions, throw them in the comments below. I'll answer them, I promise. And take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time. Thank you.